Welcome to The Shooting Show. This week we bring you some early summer fox control as Stuart Wilson puts his ATN Excite smart scope to some good use. Plus we bring you all the latest news from the shooting world. see what I can see. Mm -hmm. I'll do the stop start and the record um, and go from there. Right, drive on then. And uh, this is one of those situations that foxes kind of present themselves 
um, buildings in the in the background, built up areas, so you know there's no no shot here. Um, did my best to try and sort of call them through, but they're just uh, not going to get themselves into a, a shootable position. So we'll move on. Three uh, roe deer just lounging about in a quiet field. Um, actually, quite close to uh, a fairly sort of built up area as well. So, it's good to see them there. Rather lucky cat there in the hedge, uh, doing a good impression of a fox, but again, you know, clear identification is absolutely key. Got him. Hey? Eh? No, no, because I didn't put the camera on. There. This thing was like a broadside. Yeah, I see that. off. Well, that's the end of a fairly slim night. A um, couple of foxes there, and uh, just as we're sort of pretty much ready for packing up, there was another one appeared uh, on, a, on a fence line. Um, but it, despite all uh, our efforts, I mean, as quiet as we could, knocking the engine off, he just he wouldn't uh, he wouldn't come to us. He was kind of rooted on the fence line and disappeared behind the water trough and I thought he may sort of peel down this hedge but anyway he didn't um, but a couple of good foxes there um, one that came in really nice to the call um, and that sort of showing the um, dragonfly uh, illuminator just how much difference that actually makes um, when you compare it to the the three cubs that we shot um, across sort of harvest period and with a, with a different illuminator, not the laser illuminator. Um, 
the Excite definitely benefits from having a very bright illuminator and then having the um, aperture cover on the front of the scope. Um, it certainly it either improves the focus or it, it broadens the lengthens the focal uh, depth of field so that more of what you're actually looking at is in focus. Um, majority of the foxing that I've done has usually been with a with an optical um, scope, conventional scope. Um, I have done um, some digital night vision before the X site, um, but my lamping buddy here, Linford, he shot his first fox with the with the X site. Um, a little tricky finding things every now and again, and again, you know, he won't mind me saying this, but being a novice shooter, sometimes there's a there's a little bit more movement with the gun and actually getting onto these things, um, and coupled into the fact that I actually had the illuminator on the camera, um, not the dragonfly illuminator either, so that kind of makes it even harder. But you know, he still managed to to bag his first fox, and that was the the first of of three cubs that we got that night. Um, Another one a, a little later on that was just at the edge of the wood. Um, it's a wood that's got sort of like a, a small depression in the middle with a little bit of a pond. Um, and then we did another circuit round a few more fields and I think about 45 minutes, 50 minutes later came back and we ended up taking a third fox that was, it was quite a, it was a bit further out. We may be, I don't know, 180 somewhere around about there. Um, but certainly the illuminator that I was using then, which was just one of the... Um, uh, T67s was certainly running out of uh, illumination and wasn't giving the, the clarity. And now that I'm onto the Dragonfly Illuminator, I probably wouldn't use uh, anything else unless I tried it on the X site just to see um, how, how bright it was and the, and the, the clarity that it would give you. Um, the Dragonfly works really well with the camera, works really well with the scope. Um, and I got a phone call from um, uh, farmer through a friend and uh, he'd uh, concerned about his uh, in lamb ewes um, ready for sort of dropping their lambs so we sort of preempted that um, and got on and managed to sneak into a fairly sort of sensitive area and uh, got rigged with the X site and the, and the 243 and uh, called and didn't have too long to wait first fox sort of appearing through the hedge and pretty much as that fox was down, um, certainly no more than sort of 10 or 20 minutes, um, a little more calling, and another fox was pretty much sort of trotting in on a, a sort of similar line. So, you know, in, in the space of, you know, sort of, it seemed like maybe sort of like 40 minutes, but certainly no more than an hour, we had, you know, a couple of foxes down, dropped in the field where the farmer's sheep were. So, you know, um, good result there. And... Again, the Excite performing faultlessly and giving really good quality. Um, I think the first fox, I didn't manage to get the uh, the big camera onto it. It was one of those where we sort of pulled into the field and it was pretty much straight onto him and shot him but recorded it with the Excite. And then the second fox, um, if I remember rightly, I did actually manage to get the, the big camera onto that. So you can see, you know, obviously the, the, the differences in the quality of the image quality between the, the main camera and the Excite. A fruitful foxing mission caught on camera there. And now, the Shooting Show News. This is the Shooting Show News. Delays in firearms licensing are getting better, but the whole system is still a postcode lottery. That's what Basque has found in its latest review of the licensing system nationwide. The average processing time for an application is now 69 days, down from 88 for a firearm certificate, while shotgun certificates are on average one day quicker. However, a few forces, including Lincolnshire and South Wales, have got a lot worse. Basque's Bill Harriman highlighted the alarming lack of consistency in the service provided to the shooting community. Great Britain has another gold medalist on the world stage. Aaron Heading won gold in men's trap at the ISSF World Cup in Malta, just a few days after Amber Hill triumphed in women's skeet. 
The Commonwealth silver medalist returns to the top of the World Cup podium five years after his last victory. And it means Great Britain tops the medal standings overall for this stage of the World Cup. Read more in Clay Shooting Magazine. Staying with the ISSF, the governing body for international competitive shooting has suspended its vice president. Luciano Rossi was one of the most outspoken opponents of the ISSF's decision to remove double trap, prone rifle and free pistol from the Olympic programme and replace them with mixed team trap and air gun events. He was accused of violating the ISSF code of ethics. Now a committee has upheld the complaints and banned him from office for three years. And finally, Target Sprint is going on tour. The new international discipline has launched a series of international events, with the first taking place in Seoul, Germany this weekend. There'll also be a stage in the Netherlands before the tour comes to the UK, with a stage in Bristol. The aim is to promote the new discipline at both international and national level and to support grassroots development. That was the Shooting Show News. Well, that's it for this week. Thanks for watching. Please like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. And if you're not a member of Basque, it's time to join now. Basque, looking after your sport, looking after you. This has been The Shooting Show.